in the middle, Shiva. That shit doesn't matter. I'm making traps. Just ah. run back. Run back here. Why is it going for a rush? Hey, maybe I'll eat my words. What's going under the TC? Straight into the TC. Hold on, is absolutely the MVP of this yes. set. Um, no, Vanith was, well. was the MVP of all three games, arguably, to be honest. Yeah. At one point, it was Vanith versus everyone. Pretty sick fight for Spencer now that he has ballistics. They're about to take scoreless. But really, really good call from... Uh, Dungeon dudes. I think everyone played a more control at some point. Like, really important. Okay, so. I think the theme of this series, though, that won it, it was the teamwork. Me and Machine worked together. Okay, this is the, the castle drop is built. This castle drop on a hill. That's a really good play by my son. Oh my god, check out Spencer's castle. This castle is actually pretty smart. 72 villagers with the top square. Dropping the second castle, gonna deny these two archery ranges. Seem so to be three archery ranges. Maisel was there even though we didn't call him to be there essentially. I think uh, form four definitely uh, punched above his weight. We did not. Expect a sweep. What is up, everybody? We are back here at SS2, round three of the Swiss stage, AOE2 Underground. I'm Spencer. I'm here with Ashberg. How's it going, Ashberg? Not bad. Pretty excited for this next set of games, and uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, um, we got a lot of games today. Six. So half of round three is being played today. A ton of games. Some way later, some back to back to back. Um, right now, I'll just pull it up. I changed my scenes around a little bit. Looks like they haven't got... Oh. They're starting the map draft. We have Icelandic Seal Clubbers going up against Clan VL Team A. Both these teams are 1-1 one one right now. I think this is a very important win. Because you do not want to be 1-2. You can still make it if you're 1-2. But you have to win out every game after this. So, a little bit of cushion if you win today. With the hopes of making the top cut. And I need to see if this is the right direction on the map draft. It is not. Let me flip it around. Oops. There we go. So, Clan VL is on the right. They have chosen Arabia. And we're seeing the ban for Colosseum for Daniela, or uh, Daniela picking Colosseum as the ban for that team, and uh, Iceland banning Lombardia. Yeah, so Lombardia and Colosseum, one of the most open maps and closed maps in the tournament, are banned. Gonna definitely be quite interesting to see. Yeah, and Clan VL Team A is a 12-point team. They automatically won the coin toss. Interesting thing, though, they have chosen second pick in the draft, not first. And they chose first pick in the map draft. I think it's an advantage to get second pick in the map draft because you get to pick your map after your opponents. They did it sort of backwards. Maybe that's just how they wanted it. Maybe we're seeing some re reverse psychology here. Maybe so. Nice work, Clemens, to put Iceland in the name when one-third is Icelandic. 
I know, and they didn't even spell it right. Freaking stoners. They're islandic. Yeah, it's the islandic silk clubbers, and the draft is underway. So the goths have proven to be really good on Valley Fort, and I think they're also undefeated this tournament. I'd have to look at that. I definitely haven't checked the stats, but I've heard everybody talking about Goths being super good on Valley Fort for an opener. So it's going to be interesting to see some of these, you know, flexes, what teams are willing to put together. Right. Britain's ban, I like that. Roman's ban, that's probably because Valley Fort also, and Magyars have been insane on it. I would not ban Magyars if I was first picked, though. It's one of those sieves that, you know, if you play against it, you can have a really bad game or you can have a really, really good game. Yeah, and uh, Icelandic Silk Clubbers have had some s sort of like chances to win like their last set. I think Finneth played horrible, I'm not going to lie, but I heard he was really tired and he's supposed to be their best player, so I think he's going to have a big bounce back today. We should see him playing at the top of his game, I would hope. So far, we got three absolute meta sieves for the opening picks. Yeah, Frank's first pick, and Malian's and Ethiopian's. I wonder why Malian's so... I guess there's Eruption. There's a lot of gold in the middle. I don't even know if that's where they'll be used. Not too sure. Malian Longswords wouldn't be too bad if they would build extra militia going on Valley Fort, but we've seen how that turned out before. Right. And teams have had horrible success rate when they pick Arabia. Most teams that choose that as their home map are losing. Or have lost. We'll see if that changes in this match. Would like to see Frank's flank on Valley Fort. That'd be interesting. Frank's flank. You know, we saw some kind of build with them where they just go to berries like crazy and like the five starting farms and they just go up because they eat the berries that would, quick. That would make a lot of sense to actually do that though because they'd be like the one player that's actually not going to the middle so they're not taking all the aggro right off the start. Yeah, it's like a safe up and then I think you can go to the, the fish after you have the control. Brutes picked Arabia home map and won. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Most teams have lost when they pick Arabia. A few have won. It's very rare. It's not really a home map. You're, you're picking a map that everybody knows. I wonder if we're going to see Saracens picked on Valley Fort again when we uh, seen... I can't remember the player's name now, but he was just hopping in and out of the base when they were playing against, uh, I believe it was Benedict's team. Oh, with the Saracens? Yeah. I think they're good there too because... You can have, like, a lot of food to sell if you're an archer sieve to get, like, gold, whatever, extra wood. The The market definitely helps them get up quick, the Castle Age. Rizos would love to see Japanese on Valley Fort. They are my favorite sieve on it. I used them yesterday and loved them. Like, the fact that you don't have to take wood to click up because you... You can just get the lumber camp on your way up, or shortly before. I think it's super strong. And the wood they save on the forward mill, on the lumber camp, the berry mill, whatever. Like, Japanese are pretty damn good there. So, a lot of pocket picks from the seal clubbers. Franks, Lithuanians early. They have Slavs. Um, decent archer sieves. I actually prefer the archer sieves of Clan VL Team A, Ethiopian, Saracens. Khmer can also, they've primarily been pocket this tournament, but they can be an insanely good flank. Yeah, and I'm also really liking the archer sieves picked by uh, Clan VL Team right now. Yeah, the Tatars. I think Tatars is probably Eruption. There's a big hill. Yeah, it's kind of looking that way. Like, you got really good CA play, very mobile. I wonder if the Koreans could be, like, a tower play on... I don't know. If, maybe. On Valley Fort? I don't know. Maybe we'll see the strat that I was talking about yeah. earlier. Yeah. 
I guess you'll get a taste of if it works or not if they do it. Yeah. Maybe I'll pick the server. I'll be like, no, nope, I'm not playing that today. Right. Hmm. Byzantine's really good pick. I like that pick. It's really well-rounded if you need to just play into Skyrim and Halb. Very good defensive sieve. And, like, a free town watch or whatever is always nice. Can save many a vill. Bohemians. Where will they be used? I mean, I guess they're an archer sieve if need be. Bohemians would be pretty good on eruption because remember they have the uh, don't they get the gold upgrades? Oh, for free? that's a good point. So that could just be complete archer spam. Like you put a couple towers on your gold in the center to start off the game. Like you can out archer the enemy pretty quick. Right. I like the variety that people are choosing too. We're seeing all the maps used. Not Socotra, Eruption, a lot of Acclivity, even Donut, like they're all making it back week so after week. I, I have to say, I do like that Vikings pick at the end here when we're seeing, you know, a really good economy archer sieve being picked uh, for the Islandic Seal Clubbers. Yeah, I would like to see them on Eruption. Um, I think... When it's castles in the middle and you have good eco, you can sometimes squeeze in that final extra damage tech that they get for their arb. And that can be really good against knights, cavalier, or whatever you're fighting. Absolutely. But it looks like players are ready. I'm going to get my game up. Make sure Slapdown is in name. Thank you. So, can can so Seb said, give me 10 minutes about a minute ago. So we're going to have to kill a little bit of time. Um, let's look at the season leaderboard. So as of right now, Laposh will be playing next set very shortly after this. So will you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. What time is that at, actually? Holy crap. Let me look. Oh, that that's in about two hours. So there should be time. If you have to leave to play that set, I, I understand. <laughs> Absolutely. So he might have to leave mid-cast or near the end of it. We'll we'll just play that by ear. Um, but yeah, your boy Laposh, first place right now. 23 points. Camel Mill. Three behind. Rob Mayhem in third. Panuno also kind of tied for third. There's a three way tie. Tier does break the tie. Um, I think it's nice to see a lot of these, you know, B tier players like all the way up in this leaderboard, even higher than some of the S plus or S plus pluses. Yeah, a B tier in first, a B tier in second. I really like the B tier in eighth place. Um, for all of our speed tier players that come on guys we can do better than this <laughs> you know it's funny I'm in 8th but 8 is my favorite number so I'm happy with that spot I'm an F tier player I would just love to see an absolute failure of a player on the top 10 <laughs> yeah my teammate's actually in 7th 4 there that's Bean hey, we're tied wow we're so in sync there you go you know what would be cool? It doesn't need to be worth anything. There could be an overall team leaderboard. Like it sorts the teams by how many season points, which team has the most, second, third, fourth, fifth. That might be kind of cool. I think I'll add that just for fun. Some be saying A is a number. A is a number. Yes. Everything is a number. If you think about it. Life is math. 
I would love to disagree with that statement, but sadly, it's kind of true. <laughs> All right. We got an out of context quote coming up here. If I'd, if you'd be in my Discord, I'd be throwing that up. A is my favorite number, Spencer. Twenty twenty three. Oh wait, did it sound like I said A? Eight. Eight is my favorite number. The number eight. I think we're all gonna not let you live this one down now and just wow. kind of change it up and say A is my favorite number. And eight is my favorite letter. Yeah, I heard eight as well, but uh, I guess a little bit of a Zumpy's audio just, issue. He, Zumpy's just getting old, man. He's washed up. Him and Oof. Dev, they're like the grandpas. I mean, even Arcee's up there. Arcee's, what, 30? It's it's the grandpa team. Many thought um, they'd be great, but I think they're just so old. It's catching up to them. Spencer is 2x my age. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. I know. The only one I know in the community older than me is Clark. Back so in my got, day. We got Uncle Spencer in here now. Yeah, back in my day, actually. We played with dial-up. Was, was that back in your day when television was known as books? <laughs> 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 what am I going to watch today? Oh, how about this book? Remember back then I was reading like Lord of the Rings for the first time when this game came out? I will never forget. I had a Windows Millennium computer and my old man had two games on it. And it was Age of Empires 2, The Age of Kings, and we also had uh, The Settlers. And I would play standard campaigns over and over and over. And mm. I would struggle so bad on standard difficulty being like five or six years old to play uh, Jihad. That was the worst map ever on the Saracen campaign. I don't even remember it. Wait, the Saracen campaign, wasn't there always someone attacking the trade routes or some crap like that? Exactly why. Yeah. It was attacking always like, all trade routes or caravan. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Renault is attacking our caravan. Yep, that's right. Um, I always liked the Huns campaign when you go to like all the places with the flags. I wish the William Wallace campaign wasn't the stupid tutorial, man. Like, make a real William Wallace campaign. I would play that. I haven't played campaigns in a long time, but I would play a William Wallace one if it wasn't the, the garbage tutorial one. It's a good way for new players to get into, like, playing on hard difficulty, though, playing the William Wallace one. Yep. Um, I will share on... Discord once I have capture age up. I just haven't opened it yet till we get in the game. Yep. Yeah. So let's look at the other leaderboards. Kills. Right now. Panunu, two thousand three hundred and fifty kills. There's only one other person with two thousand, that's believe me, with two thousand twenty one, but that's a pretty big lead he has right now. We see me in third, I love that. Razor in fourth. Wow, he's right on my tail. Three kills. Forzair, not too far behind him. Raid, 1699. Or 1699. Shout out to my boy Squared in 10th place, you know? He's building trebs. Hey, I just realized. Well, we had a long Lombardia, but my whole team is in the top 10 kills. Four and four. Forzair and myself, I love that. I believe that Lombardia game is what uh, really set Laposh apart from everybody else on the KD ratio. Because I think when we played, Laposh had something like 740 kills and 309 deaths. So definitely gave him quite the boost. Yeah, that's why he'd be up there. Shiva also and Raid are the same team. And they're in 6th uh, and ninth. The only one not there is Majalo. He's actually in 17th. You can't see it, but I can. Let's look at the next one. Laposh. KD, 2.44. Razor, 1.84. Rob, 1.68. Panuno, 1.64. And Clemens, 1.63. Barely behind Panuno. 
And then Laposh again on the Eco KD. He's just all over these leaderboards. 7.49. That, that's probably going to change today <laughs> when you guys play. I actually expect these numbers to come down. Rob Mayhem. Uh, man, we're only looking up from here. Look at this. This is interesting. Rob Mayhem's in third here. Third here. Oops. Third here. And I haven't updated it yet. I forgot to say this. We're going to make top 10 worth points now. And instead of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, they're going to go down by 0.5s. So 5, 4.5, 4, 3.5, 3. Because 3 there's so many of us, like, I don't think anyone's going to be upset. Like, wait, number 10 gets 0.5, number 9 gets 1. I think everyone gets a little bit more points that way. I think that's a pretty fair way to do your leaderboards. Yeah, then it's top 10. Like, top 5 just doesn't sound cool. I have to say, that's a pretty scary average eco kills on the top. Oh, per game? Or the yeah, like... The, the somebody's just Yeah, somebody's just looking at all three of the players just behind everybody's lines, and yeah, I'll take a bill here, bill here. Yeah, how the hell are you getting 130 a game? And then Camomile's only lost three a game, Rob, five, Mac, B, four... Wow. And being new, his would come down. I think he was actually at the top, if I remember correctly. He's down to 85 a game. <clears throat> Laposh, with, uh, if you look at the next one over on the feudal age times, like average feudal age, 820. That's pretty solid. Yeah. I think that was a 17 with loom or an 18 no loom in the mix. One of the games. Stravos, oh, no. I have yet to lose a game in this tournament or play a game. I think you just jinxed yourself, my friend. Now when you play a game, it might go pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> Yikes. And then, of course, we have the other average feudals. Marcus leading the charge with the best castle by far and his teammate Ace of Spades in second. Best amp belongs to Ray. 29-23. And I never get to imp in that time. Nope, me either. Because I'm normally dead by that time. <laughs> we just... Uh, <laughs> we all do our best to adapt to our surroundings, right? Yep. And then limone, Limonade. Like disco limonade. No, I don't know. Uh, 31. Clemens, 31. Link, 32. Link?! Oh, that's you, isn't it? Is that me? That is you. You are Link. So the way we have it set up, the subs just play for the main person that was there. So you're actually at 32-23. Nice. I guess if you think about it, like when I played Lombardia there, I did sell quite a bit to go up at a decent time. Yeah, you played well in that game. I know you said that it kind of stalled out, but it gave your team control. It put them in a tight spot. And you guys eventually won. I don't think we need to mince words. All you gotta do is protect Laposh. <laughs> <laughs> Give Laposh a chance to carry. Okay, it looks like we're still waiting on someone. I'll go to the in game. Wait. I'll be right back in a minute, Spencer. Sorry, All right. I just had something come up, but I'll be right no back. No worries. So if you guys want to see the players, Han Swolo, 1530. He's been climbing. He broke 1500, I think, last week. 1v1. Looks like he's going to make the push for 1600 soon. Beneth, he's fallen a little bit. He was 1800 plus, but he's still right there. Dan Yella, looks like he is quite up there. I think he's the A tier. Yes, that is the S tier for Clan VL. Daniela is their A tier. Clemens 1568. Looks like he hasn't even played a 1v1 ranked in a while because he has no rank. Okay, hold on. Someone told me Daniela is a 55-year-old man when they were playing because I said she. 
You guys mess with me too much. Someone verify that. Daniela, a dude, or a chick. Because this is not like the... This is not the Daniela, like... The famous one or whatever. Semi-famous. Archer Reno, do you know that for a fact, or are you assuming? Do you actually know Daniela? Okay, now Daniela is a guy. I was walking back across the hall, and all I heard was, uh, and Daniela is a guy. Please, <laughs> please fill me in. <laughs> um, well, I thought Daniela was a girl earlier in the tournament, and the, I think the Clan VL people were like, yo, that's a guy. Oh, okay. And then Archerino just said, Daniela is a she. And I, we had to, we had to verify it. Archerino Oof. isn't actually doesn't actually know Daniela. He or she, I guess. I don't even know if Jan uh, they assumed. I don't think we should have any assumptions in today's world on uh, <laughs> gender topics. <laughs> That's a very sensitive time. I know. Okay, looks like all the players are in. We're about to get this party started. Round three, Swiss stage. I think it's a, I would call it pivotal round three. Because this is putting a lot of teams above 500 and a lot of teams below. So a lot of two and ones, one and twos, three and O's, own threes. I think you really want to be at least two and one. You're not out. But if you lose this game, you have to win out. And that is a steep hill to climb to make the top cut, if you ask me. Well, thanks for putting the pressure on our games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're one and one, you got to win. Okay, looks like they probably hit ready. And whoever the last person to join was did not click yes. Noob... Joiner. Slap down Icelandic. See, they spell Icelandic right. Oh no. Yeah, they did. But not the Icelandic. I want to see who didn't click the button. So we can all laugh at them. Ha <laughs> ha! What a loser. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wait, it wasn't Clinton. No. Clemens has been in the game. Clemens is a big pothead. You never know. Come on. SS2 Valley Fort. Valley Fort has been insane. I almost regretted putting it in the tournament until like these matches started happening on it and hell yes. Okay, so it was uh Ursolinko. I don't think that's their player. No, there's no way. Get the hell out of there. Kick him. But yeah, Valley Fort has been very entertaining. We've seen a mix of everything. We've seen um, teams go heavy militia and lose. Heavy militia and win. No army and lose in Dark Age. No army and win. The middle gets taken in Dark Age. It gets taken back in Feudal. And then the other team takes it back in Castle. Um, lots of different strategies. Romans have won and lost there and been picked left and right on it. I think they've won once. Maybe twice now. Actually, 
I think they have one twice on it. Okay, that is their player. Bishael. I think it's an E. I think the. Uh, yeah, that's an E tier. 1281, I would assume. Yeah, just looking at that. That's got E tier written all over it. So it's an E, an S, and an A for Clan VL. And we got a BB. S, right? Oh wait, SBC I think. Let me look. Oh again. come on, Clemens has to be rated like S plus 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 plus. He was Let's number one on again. Team Empire Wars leaderboards. Yeah. yeah, he is um the number one player in Iceland, and he's number three I think on. We can look at that actually. Yeah, they're SBC. Clemens. Oh, he dropped. He's number five. What a noob. <laughs> Ooh, game is up, I think. All right, let's go. I will share right now. On Discord. Uh, capture age. Did it share on uh, Discord? Yep, working good. Perfect. Okay, um, where's my capture age? There we go. So, looks like we got Aztecs, Japanese, and Slavs for the team I will update shortly, but there's already action with the Scouts. This is Icelandic Seal Clubbers on the left. And they went forward right away, I love that. Find VL Team A. Where are their Scouts? Uh-oh. One scout going behind the bases. Yeah. That makes me wonder, is somebody looking for some kind of cheese strat trying to go behind, or...? Is this auto-scout? <laughs> I don't know. I do like the early pressure Whoa, from... Whoa, uh, what's with this? Islandic. The wall was deleted. Oh, no. These are probably no Loonville somewhere in here. Okay, can we listen to um, Icelandic Seal Clubbers? Absolutely. If they don't take the middle, we do get up faster, even with making a few malice shots. Yep. But let's check everything. He's rebuilding the palace. Let's, uh, yeah, check for like wherever Vil Rush is. Don't think that's a huge problem, but. Okay, we can cut the chatter. So it looks like one team is opening militia, one team is electing not. Okay, now the action sort of died down. I'm going to update this real quick. All right. Just catch up. So they're killing the deer. I love that. Han Swallow. Just wrecking the deer. There's there's no one on fish. We've never seen this approach. So it's berries and farms. I've never seen one team only do this. And I'm kind of curious to see how it plays out. I feel like it's just a little bit weaker to open the game with. But I mean, we have seen, you know, a lot of militia. And clearly 15 militia versus one villager on a feudal age building is quite, you know, weak. So... Let's see what they can put out here. And I think they've halted all militia production. They might have even planned to make more, but why? Like, they're not on the fish. Don't invest in any more militia. I like what seal clubbers are doing here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really liking that they're already putting pressure on the Palisade Gate as well. Like, if you're not sending a vill there and they open it up, I would think that they're just going to full-on send everything there to keep the gate opened and, you know, just steam like steamroll into the base yeah and we see them going forward now for fish zumpy says i think they don't know the map i kind of agree and we can look at the res i guess i haven't been looking at idle eco we already see feudal in for clemens is anyone else even close no like look how fast that food came in fanith is going to be up i think they're in massive trouble 
Yeah, this is kind of looking a little bit like a throwaway game almost at this point. Yep. I would actually be shocked if Clan VL has a chance with this opening. Well, you're seeing yellow here, like four vills being delayed. Scout already at half HP. And they're Everybody's just... Everybody's just delaying them. They're going to jump the hell out of this. Daniela did get Militia, but it's kind of late. Yeah, and that one Militia is already down. So now you have a low HP Eagle and your Militia that's in a really tough state. And they're like hornets over these four villagers on fish now. It's all there is. So they're like, let's just punk it. Not one of the vills is... Okay, the first drop of food. So you're getting your first 40 food from it. But you're also seeing that there's consistent pressure. That militia is going to eat it. But now look. Icelandic Steel Clubbers has military. I, I think Ra Franquito is going to get kicked off his fish. That he just got to, and it's actually going to probably cost him more walking there, making the mill, and then running away. Maybe. Clemens already hitting the feudal age. He's probably just going to open scouts, make sure that they can't go to the center yet. Stable coming up. You are right. Oh, there's an ad. Forgot to run one. Whoops. Whatever. <laughs> you get to see. <laughs> And the really nice 17 pop up time from Clemens though, like really smooth opener. Look, they're all up too behind it. They have the fish. I Clan VL team A is so dead. I really feel like at this point Clemens should just know that they have the map. He should just straight up look to go FC. Like he's so comfortable, they have no pressure on their base. Yeah, you know what? Does he really need scouts? I mean, I guess you can get in with archers behind it. He might oh, make hold an the door. extra one. Hold the door, hold the door, hold the door. Look oh, at this. Oh, this is going to be really bad. Oh my gosh. Okay, he walled it. Okay, never mind. I would have actually just held it with one and chased. Hey, wait. But now yellow's oh, lost hole. five bills. Uh oh. Yep, Zumpy was right. Still open there. I, that did not look like a hole, but it sure is. But now we're seeing yellow bring those five vills back. Like, they got almost no value from the middle. Yeah, the idle time did not pay off. The wood on the mill. What's uh, Clemens' eco at right now? I feel like he might just be trying to FC behind this. He'll probably throw out a couple of scouts. You know, Hans Wolo is going to skip Butyl, it looks like. Is he making And that's any... just the correct play. He's like, they know that they have range. the whole center. He could almost skip it. With the food he has, he could do single range into quick crossbows. And Clemens, I think, is double stable. Yep. There's going to be a lot of scouts running around. Finneth is going... He turned his militia into minute arms, and he's going archers. Fletching coming in. You can get all the ecotechs easily with this fish control, too. Absolutely. Second range, so Han Swolo is not going to be going up super quick, but I mean, it'll come in pretty fast. 500 food, you could even sell a smidge. And they're already into the base. This is looking very, very rough. Let's listen to Clan VL Team A. Torres. <laughs> Sí, no, era una puta torre, güey, no, no. marica. Ya piqué, ya piqué castillos. Ya piqué castillos. Ya piqué castillos. Arcee, ¿qué están diciendo? A ver si alcanzo a cerrar. No, no alcanzo a cerrar, güey. No, no importa, no, no te enfoques en eso, no te enfoques en eso. No te nada. Quick walls. Nos comieron, perro. Nos comieron. Okay, we can cut the chatter. The amount of eco KD that's gonna come in right now. Where's the tower? You need a tower? Yeah. The problem is yellow's already full idle, right? Like TC's garrisoned. It's just looking a little bit rough. Yeah, and if he doesn't want to slaughter, that's going to happen right now. <laughs> he just cheat cheats it. Yeah, unfortunately, you 
uh, kind of took a little bit too long to get to the middle of this game. I mean, yellow is just out of this game. It was really well played from Team Islandic <laughs> because they just ran forward, got you know the early vision, then they patrolled across the ponds and noticed as soon as they came out with a few bills, and that just shows that the middle is a huge benefit on this map. Right. I think no military does not work. There has to be some form... Oh, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe it works if you actually go forward to the ponds for a little bit. But, like, not going at all. I don't know. MVP pull us out. Loom. I think you can get it, like... Think of when the scouts, if they run forward immediately, three of them, and are on a vill. I think that's by, like, vill... Like, the second or third created vill. That timing could happen. I like how RC was doing the translating for us, and he said, and the final one said, damn, they ate us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, RC. I missed that. They ate us. Yeah. They ate the fish. They ate your base. They ate your bills. And they ate the victory. Question is, like, how is this mentally going to affect uh, Team Clan VL? Because, I mean, you open up, obviously didn't really study the map very much, didn't really have a strategy coming into this. So, you know, what's the adverse effect going to be on the next game? Are they going to be shaken up? Because isn't their home map Arabia next? Yes. And Arabia has been a curse for most teams. They just get clapped on it. Um, and we know Fanath is a 100% lamer, so if we see an early lame from Fanath in the next game, like that might just completely crush this team's spirits. I think we will. I think there's definitely going to be a lame. Um, Fanath with 11 and 1 KD. Looks like MVP votes are going to him so far. I guess uh, Fanath's... Uh... KD is going to go up by quite a bit this game, considering if you count the uh, average kill-death ratio, now he pulls out an 11 on it. And look at the feudal times, because the other team did not go to fish, and I, I think they just didn't know the map at all. Um, no, it looked like nobody really studied the map. They kind of just went out and There's not enough food it. if you don't. There's five farms, and there's berries. There's no boars, there's no sheeps, or there's no sheep. Um, it is the only way... I think. Play this map. You know, uh, Zumpy, VL's home map next is going to be Arabia. Yeah, so we can take a look back at that. I took the little wins off I had. I'm going to find a better thing to put in place. Because they were bugging out. But it's still the same setup for the most part in this screen. Um... Let's see. Looks like Finneth is likely going to win MVP. A few more seconds to go. Japanese have been so good on this map. In a way, it kind of sucks. I wanted to see like what the Slavs were going to play. I was really interested to see if you know they'd hit FC and just build castles across the center of the map with the castle up to our uh, unique tech, and just go for a bunch of boyars. But we didn't get to see a whole lot, did we? No, the strategy kind of <laughs> worked out for them just by playing the game. Yep. Congrats to Fenneth, MVP. So Korean's tower rush is not a uh, very viable strat here. Apparently not. It end, it ended too quick. I wonder if uh Clan VL is going to open up meta on Arabia cuz you do have Ethiopians and Saracens and then if they go something like you know, Hindustani's pocket that could be pretty deadly against anything that uh, the Islandic SEAL clubbers have to offer. 
Right, I'm going to run an ad real quick. Actually, we have... Oh, no, never mind. 34 minutes. Yeah, I should run one. Incoming ad. So Arabia, yeah, I think we'll definitely see Ethiopians. Maybe the Hindustanis. I think they're probably better there than Eruption. Yeah, I I would think right now, like, you're already down a map. You just have to play pretty meta here and go with Ethiopian Saracens. I mean, like, the Archers versus the enemy team is going to be absolutely huge if you can hit those early uptimes. And then you have Hindustanis with potential Imp Camels versus anything like Lithuanians or, you know, Byzantines, like... The Civ picks that they have available for Arabia does look better in the early game versus what Icelandic has, but never know. Yeah, and I, I agree with what Zumpy said. Camels really suck in 3v3, in my opinion. They can work, I think, but your flanks have to kind of dominate or something. <laughs> Sumpy saying, what elo is this co-caster? Well, I'm actually like 432 elo, just so that you know. Yeah, he's a... Uh... Elo starts with a 4. That's correct. Take that, Hera. Yeah, I think it can work, but it, it absolutely hasn't worked, and I think it's... It's very risky. You can just die. Especially if it's big team fights. Like a 3v3 fight when there's camels on one side, it gets so destroyed. I do agree with uh, what Sumpy is saying. Like, it is bad, but if you do hit those imp camels, it's pretty they, disgusting. They kill all. Every one of us knows if somebody ever gets the imp camels, you're like, wow, like, what do I even do against this? Yep. They are still in the lobby. All of them are in the lobby. Maybe, um, someone's smoking or something, probably. Probably Clemens. In fact, I need to grab a water real quick. I'll be right back. <sighs> okay. Back. Let's see if they started the game. Would Fanath still be S tier with his current ratings? Mm. Fanath may always be S tier in our hearts, but maybe not. And you can look right now in player rankings. He may actually be an A tier at the moment. So instead of a team that a lot of times we see players getting better he could be one that got worse let's keep an eye on Fanath right now he is the mayans they are great at laming see the mayans the portuguese and the franks for the seal clubbers and we see the saracens ethiopians and hindustanis okay i guess we didn't try to call the other team but these are pretty predictable arabia sieves Oh, uh, you might have to switch your screen. That's to everybody's still looking at the a great draft. idea. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So Fen is going forward. He wants the lame. He's very good at it. I think he could maybe spot the rhino on the right. Daniela is in a spot to intercept if that happens. And right now he's heading right for the TC. That's like what I do every single time Bennett? that I ever play. Okay, he saw the tree. He 
He wants it. Is he is he just giving up? Yeah, come Daniel on. is actually in a pretty good spot right now to notice the seagull early on. Eagle gets Got some two pokes. heads off from the scout. Okay, and look at the reaction. He's taking the bar early. Taking That's the rhino. That's the correct play. I don't think Finneth is going to find anything today. We do see on Swallow. They're kind of on the lookout for these lames, I feel like. Ag Unfortunately, it looked like Orange may have killed the one uh, sheep a little bit too far from the TC there, but not a huge deal. I will look into that Hag Barder. I didn't realize anyone could do that. I, I heard you had to be like a certain elo or something, but maybe that was just someone BSing me. And look at this Finneth going for the back rhino. And where's... Okay, Daniela does not realize this is happening. This could be devastating. Like, I wonder if Fanath is going to take this or if he's going to run it all the way back to the climb. pocket, maybe. Give his pocket a gift. I think he's taking it home. And look, the rhino is visible. I think Daniela knows now. Yeah, Daniela definitely sees it. Going for the cutoff. Oh, anyone That's can. the thing, though. Like, if, if Fanath just turns and goes straight to Clemens with that boar or Oof. the rhino, like, could be huge. Is he going to miss it? Oh, oh gosh. No. He's going to. Okay, he found a sheep. The sheep's going to get taken right now. He sees it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Daniela in a great spot to intercept this. Intercept this. Fanath's just doing the good old stop move. Oh, I think Fanta's going to get it. It's just so close. Pretty hard to lose it now. They're doing the dance. Fanta with the I'd successful I'd even be able to get a TC lane. shot in here. Yep. Oh. oh. Oh, that's huge damage on the scout. Yep. Watch him kill it on accident. Okay, he got it. <laughs> even if you'd kill it at that point, you yeah, got he's... excellent damage on that scout. You're in a really great position. Idle time, 12 seconds for Finneth behind that. One for Daniela, but let's look at the food situation. 242, 348. Daniela's going to have to push all these ostriches. I don't know the best response when this happens. I think it is to kind of wall up more. That's, that's my opinion. The only problem opinion. is the whole front of Daniela's base is just absolutely open. So, do you just wall to your TC? Yeah, wall on the left and right in. to the TC. I, I think you're right. Boom, boom. Daniela has a really good safe gold, and then maybe tower on the hill, if nothing else. But still, it's a pretty rough-looking base for Daniela. It's very open. You could wall to here, wall to here, tower gold, and have, like, a safe wood and gold to kind of salvage the situation. Now, actually, it's not terrible. 20 up still for Daniela. So, I Daniela should actually be fine. Because Benneth also... Wait. Just going for the short walls, playing pretty open, honestly. Oh, I don't know. it is a real that difference. Yeah, this is Mayans. I'm like, how are they up at the same time? But... The difference in time. Yeah, yeah, it's mine. So it's a 19 up kind of for Finneth. That should be fine. I don't think the the lame actually did a massive amount. It will be some food issues for Fletching and stuff like that, though. I'm wondering if we might see a forward tower coming up here just to protect the berries for the food eco. We'll see. It looks like Clements is definitely going to be sending this way also. Yeah. Then we'll be seeing the 1v1 from Han Swallow and, uh, I don't know how to say Orange's name, but on the other side. I just say Bishael. I don't know if it's correct or not. It just sounds cool. Bishael. <laughs> Arcee, how do you say Bishael? Oh, a Vil gonna go down. The doink, the weak Vil. That's rough. It's found. 
And also, Han Swolo harassing the range on the left. A little bit of delay. Almost thought those were archers for a second. <laughs> And yellow with the weak scout. And this is Ethi. Oh no, Ethiopians are on the left. I would almost prefer being lamed with the Ethiopians because you get the extra res. Yeah, Bich it's actually not the Bichayao. worst. Bichayao. Bichayao. I'm going to keep saying it that way. Bichayao. Military, we see a 15 to 8 advantage for Icelandic Seal Clubbers. Holy crap. And Fletching's coming in. Daniela has one archer. Venet has three and two spears. There are scouts on his gold. I think he'll be fine with this many vills. He's going to lose a vill. The scouts are almost cornered there. That would have been crazy. Got four scouts out now looking to roam around found of the space. Venet is down two vills. I don't know when the other one died. Did he lose one to a boar? I don't know. They have two eco kills. Nope, they killed another one. Missed it. That well, wood I... line is in serious danger. Absolutely. Got Clump pointing is just out. Gonna block here. They pointed out a lot of idle TC two for Finneth. He's at. And they have the little hill advantage against the three archers. Wow, look how many Vills Daniela and Venith are down right now. I see 28 for some players. They're at like 23 and 22. Cleaning the archers. This is huge right now. Um, NVL has to hold or this could be a quick GG. I still want the tower on the gold and the wood. I just think this is a dangerous situation. It yeah, takes and I safe mean, wood it's... here. And it's a decent hill that if you tower, it's giving you the extra damage. Because these vills, they're going to lose another weak vill any moment if they spot it. They could lose two, two. maybe three. Yeah, it's looking like that maybe one's gonna die three. Too. We'll definitely get that one. Well, yep. I think I think uh, Island Whoa. is pretty happy with their... And what the here. hell is going on here? Sean's killed three. Dude, this is... Icelandic Seal Clubbers are taking it to Clan VL right now. We're seeing an absolute massacre. They are sick of losing. They want to win. Yeah, this I think this is a quick 0-2. There's, there's no way back in this game. This early, they're double your military. They're 10 vils ahead almost. They need some kind of miracle. They did the double trade with the archers. Well, the good news scout could... numbers not looking too bad for yellow right now, but yeah, you're that's still the... fighting two armies. It's the only thing they have going. He has 34 vills. He has more than Clem's. He doesn't have armor. Clemens has armor coming in. But again, Iceland making the correct play here by going to the know, pocket, going straight to the pocket, just put the pressure on him. He's the last player that really has anything left to give. Yeah, the flanks are dead. Venice is gonna Okay, there's the tower we wanted a while ago. I like it. And they I are would have in. even like tower the berries earlier, wall up to the first wood line. Yeah, you just have to know that damage is coming, kinda foresee it early. Pretty much when the lane happened. And unfortunately yellow can't even take his main gold now. Can we listen to Icelandic? Yep. Yeah. Oh god. Whoop. I think they're pretty happy just sitting by that main gold. By the way, I did audio adjustments. Is he lo is Ashberg loud enough, guys? I forgot about that. I needed to do some recording tests. Why not just kill the house? Because I'm already here. Okay. Hurt this house. Sounds fantastic. Thanks, guys. Oh, I'm floating with them. Good. Oh, he's trying to engage. The spear ready. Alright, I'm gonna hit pocket now. 
Uh, do we, do we yes. actually? Yeah, yeah, okay. This woodland here, very exposed, but he might, like, his army is, like, more mobile at the moment than mine. So he could try and, uh, like, collapse on you. How much does he have? Mm -hmm. A bunch. A bunch. Uh, but I... Oh, I can't fight this, I can't fight this yet. No, just leave, just leave. We can cut the chatter. I kind of like how Finn has said, let me die, just run. <laughs> Way too many scouts to have a chance against. They do but have foraging way, and armor. What was that? In a way, that does show that, you know, Yellow is having to invest so much into scouts that it's going to delay his uptime. Yeah, we see Castle Age for Clemens. Yellow's getting close, but not yet. Consuelo's also up. Some great times for the Seal Clubbers. Bennett, I think, has had an eco-disaster. Not disaster, but he's four vils behind. Definitely a later castle coming in. Fanus has also had a lot of time to recover, though, at the same time. So it's looking quite nice. His base is fully walled. And I think we're going to see a big team fight. Where's Orange? Orange won't be here, but we see five out of six armies all converging. At Raw Franquito, this could be for the game right here. They are trapped. Uh, Clemens and Hanswold, if they go in, they could be in trouble before uh, Clemens or uh, Fanath arrives. But they have a lot of archers. And a hill. I think Fanath will just make this worse for uh, the VL team. Yeah, it's looking a little bit rough. They want the surround. The clubbers want the surround. They're not going to let these archers get away, I don't think. They don't even know Finneth is about to arrive. That'll be a big surprise. I think you pounce. I think you pounce. I would agree. I think it's the correct time to take the yellow being yep. forced off. Yep, was sneaky. I love that. He jumped right on him. Now you lose a group of archers. Orange is trying to harass Teal's base, but I don't know if he's going to... Oh, I guess it's a little bit open. Yeah, a little bit, but big clean here. Castle's in. This is a disaster. And someone already quit. Yeah, they called the GG. GG is called quick 2-0. That was quick. Some people you were right. It's hard to get to the M camels, but I had a little bit of faith. Yeah. Wow, that that's the best uh, Icelandic seal clubbers have looked. Felt like a really well opened game from both of them. You know, like both games controlling the middle early. Early lames, I think they did an excellent job with trying to take the early map pressure, and that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Um, Eco KD, Sean at five. He lost two. I think he lost two right now. Probably. Um, Clemens with five. Finneth with two. The co caster is Ashberg. Look at the kills. MVP poll is out. On Swallow with 14, Clemens with 9, Finneth with 16 and 8. Kind of hard to pick an MVP there. Um, it seemed like Finneth, he got the lame. He had a little bit sloppy um, idle time. But other than that, it was still great. Great performance overall. First time trying to be in the cool kids club. <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> Yeah, this is your first time casting. That's correct. Circle of Brothers, says Larry, uh, Lucky Larry Silverstein, a.k.a. Sammy. Clemens with a nice feudal time. First to castle also. He invested just enough to go up quick. Dumpy says he really enjoyed it, Ashberg. Need more of this co-caster. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. So well, maybe I'll you... get picked again after I get my ass kicked tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and right now we're at... I forget how many games I said there's going to be. There's like 70 or so games this tournament. After this round, we'll be at about 30. So, That's actually quite a lot of games. Yeah. 
We're almost halfway. Oh, we see Clan VL leaving the chat already. I don't know. They might be a little bit uh, down on their mood. Yeah, and we don't do loser interviews. Typically, it's just, I don't think people enjoy them anyways. They just lost. Maybe the finals of the tournament will do a loser interview, because those are okay. Unfortunately, the first game, like, I do feel bad. And I know that you know, unfortunately, getting wrecked as hard as you did on the first map, like, that really sets your mental in the wrong position for your game, too. Yeah, and it seemed like they didn't prepare. That's No, it was it was really sloppy, actually. That's the first team we've seen ignore the fish. And they were, like, scouting the backs of their base. Like, they were, like, it looked like playing Mega Random and you're trying to figure the map out. Like, exactly. oh, there's fish out here, guys. Oh, really? Okay. We'll go get that. Late. I believe we all learned in Finding Nemo that fish are friends. <laughs> Not food, apparently. Well, For the yeah. BL team. <laughs> 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 um, Total APM, 116 for Rob Franquito. Wow. Bennett is always pretty quick. Clemens actually 74. And Sean the Slow looking actually pretty quick. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Sean. Uh, Han Swallow. <laughs> 49, looking pretty quick. Fenneth MVP, congrats. And we can jump into the interview. Let me just update the MVP real quick. Okay, round. Wait, what's going on? Arabia, there's been a lot of Arabia played this tournament. An important win too. Um, you need to go two and one. I feel like to have a chance. Let's go to the interview. Uh, look at uh, Red Space, kinda like how oh, he yeah, just better than how, how he builds the like protection to the TC and like he like if he didn't have that. If, if he hadn't been forced into the tower, he would have probably like built houses from the north wood lane to the TC as well, like what, kind of around the gold. What are we so looking you're just at? Wall to the right wood line instead. Oh. base. <laughs> you're looking at red space. No, Sean's base. Oh, Sean. My uh... who got MVP? Who got MVP? Vanith. <laughs> Damn these people, man. Yeah, my new design. Of fans. fans. So you of wanted course. Sean to just wall to the wood line on the right? Or I don't know what you were actually saying. <laughs> yeah, we were just kind of wondering about his walls. Could have probably been eh. better. They're interesting. Uh -huh. But anyways, congratulations, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Some yeah. dominant wins. you say wins. they're interesting, I'll have, have to watch the stream and listen to what you guys were saying about my walls. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I actually didn't notice. That we weren't even looking that way. We just heard you guys talking about them right now. <laughs> I That's think we played this game well. Subject. But the first game, I think, was kind of a free win because I don't think they actually knew how the map is played. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I think we all thought the same thing yes. on that one. Yes, it's I like they were playing mega random. Yeah. I was going to open the questions with how did you guys feel about having the free middle so early? I We were confused. We were very confused. Yeah, we were really confused. Like, we're like, where are they? We're like looking for units or villagers anything coming forward we expected a berber rush you know did you guys yeah, kind of decide on the fly no more militia when you saw that yeah. just cut it off yes nice yes. good heads up play absolutely we saw the super early feudal from clemens and then uh also i was pretty curious like what was going through your guys' heads when you saw him delete the palisade wall at the very start i thought it was a trap he was gonna try for scouts and then do something sneaky in the middle like, nah, no, 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 i'm not i don't want to get trapped in here <laughs> <laughs> it was too sketchy. Well, it, yeah. was... it didn't seem right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the entire game was a little bit sketchy. The, the first one, like no army production. If they were FCing all three of them, and like Sif wise, the Berber should have Berber rushed. <laughs> yeah. that happens. <laughs> one of them went to bear a uh, fish late. You guys kicked him right off. I think he got less out of even going at that point. One of them invested in the militia late. I think they were kind of like, oh, there's fish. Oh, they're making militia. We'll make militia. They were like doing everything think, late. Like, oh, we yeah. prepared a decent amount for that map. I don't think they did. Like, if they would have watched 
even one game of like the tournament the last five games i think they would have been a lot more prepared yeah honestly my team played it based on watching all the teams play it like okay we'll do this because that doesn't work and that does and that's bad and that's good you know like mm -hmm. kind of get an idea yeah. i we spend a lot of time like choosing sibs like where is it vietnamese better is well not vietnamese but like dravidians or japanese Slavs japanese or Magyars, all that stuff I, I love that you went japanese there they're just yeah. so good keep a mills keep a woods i think Shadrach. oh great yeah and i think the meta still isn't figured out no one knows like this is the exact yeah. way to play this map like i don't they think went that's koreans figured didn't out. they so like that could have been tower rush potential that's... That's what Ashberg was hoping for. <laughs> or just towers Ours. all over the middle. Maybe not tower rush, but just towers everywhere. So no one can take food except for them. Gotta make it to feudal and then castle for that to work. I feel like... From now on, we can just always ban the map. So we don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> Although at this point, it's like, well, we've practiced so much. It's uh, a fun <laughs> map. Yeah, but... I'm not gonna I still don't like it. I, I don't enjoy playing it. I just don't. <laughs> well, I look at it like this. You practice a map that everyone isn't really used to. You pick it as your home map. And it's an advantage where we see they picked Arabia. You guys know how to play Arabia. There's no, like, yeah, edge they, there. They stole our Arabia pick. Yeah. We were sad. Yeah, we don't <laughs> pick Arabia. I, I don't like it. I think the map's random. Oh, the, the deer can be behind it. You're gambling with it. And you're picking a map that everybody knows. Like, come on, pick a home map, get an advantage, do whatever you want, but that's my take on it. I think it's a bad strategy to pick Arabia. Yeah, but some people just like playing Arabia. I know. If you want an edge, is all I'm saying, don't. Yeah. But if it's you want to play edge. a map you like, yeah, go for it, Arabia, I guess. You have faith in your play, you don't need you don't need to overstrat. So how would you play. guys rate Sean's base? His walling. Nine, uh, 10 11 out, out of 10? 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10? Finneth? Well, if, if, like assuming I had actually finished the walls that I started building, like, they just Bill just sort of left the wall unfinished. How do you rate it, Sean? Mm. Now that I see, six out of ten. Six out of ten. Chat, anyone? <laughs> Sean's what base. Do what do we think? <laughs> So I last guess. real quick question. How did you guys feel about the Civ matchup going into game two? We felt good. Yeah, yeah. very good. We got way, way better. Civ we, uh, somebody uh, in a previous game may have picked Hindustani Pocket and realized, you know, even, though, that was not yeah, even though the rest of the player. team was saying it was terrible, terrible to play it in 3v3. <laughs> but one stubborn man says, I am team leader. I am the captain. And we will play the camas. <laughs> Yeah, it could, have worked. could have worked. Could have. I had, it I had personal beliefs that we would be seeing the M camels come out, but unfortunately, it didn't quite happen. <laughs> no. Just a few the weights altogether. And four v four, kill the flank can happen. Three v three. Yeah, hoping nah. the games would go a little longer because, like, the uh, the right side was out here load. Like, and Finneth got the backbore lame on Daniela. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Very well. Like done. I knew. I knew, like, I should not have gone for it, but it went quite well, actually. <laughs> you just can't resist, man. We know. <laughs> I'm always getting a little bit tilted when I'm in the front of the bases and I don't see any, any boards. Then I spent all that time on their base. Like, I need to get some profit out of it. So. It's like, it's I, think, I think it's an addiction, like, man. I finally got the board. <laughs> uh, I think it's an addiction. It's a sickness. You just can't stop. <laughs> Uh, it did work out like the yellow was throw on there. On the on, yeah, on the on the builds he was planning. Yeah. And we knew they were in trouble from the lame on. Um I like the tower that yeah. Daniela has now. It could have even been a little left and early. I wanted it on that gold early. Walls like he has, and then like you're good. Yeah, that first yeah, woodland was fine, sketchy. Yeah. It was very sketchy. Yep. Oh boy, that's where they uh, he walled her woodline first. Yeah, once we like, on that hill, it's pretty much GG for Red. This yeah. right here, you're safe, and you don't give a crap if Fletching's late. You can mass archers, kind of butt sit in your base till the mm -hmm. food comes in that you're missing out from the lame. Yep, true. 
Yep. But anyways, congratulations, guys. You win a very pivotal round three match because you're two and one and not one and two. So that's much better odds of making the top cut. I've, I don't know what percent chance. I bet that's the difference of like 30% and 60% or something. I don't know exactly, but it's a big difference. 99%. Right. <laughs> yeah, you would have had to win out everything if you lost this game, and there's still a slight chance you don't make it. A very small chance, but... All right. yeah, but still, Is like... Is team ready to play? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, there, there was a 12-point team. The other team was a 7-point team and a 113-point team that, that we lost. So I, well, I still feel like we got to win everything, right? Uh, because we have two-time yeah. team that's yeah, basically weaker than the other. That's teams. a good point. You may need to be 4-1. and one. But 3-2 and two might squeak, and there's other teams also getting some free wins here and there. Oh, uh, a part of me, I don't know how it would work. I wish there was just a way to make 12th and 13th place have to play a best of three for that final spot. I think that would Yeah, be, that would actually be better, yeah. It would be cool, but I don't know how if it could happen quickly and the next round still happens on time, I would be up for it. But I don't know if it adds an extra week just for one game. That's what I don't want. No, of course. Yeah. But if there were, if there was a way to just make that match happen, that would be really cool for the last spot. But I don't think so. Just a grudge match afterwards. Just, just win, guys, <laughs> and you'll make it. Just win. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Just win, baby. All right. Um, GGs. We're gonna Jeez. go back up and update the brackets. And Ashberg, you gotta play soon. But we'll see you guys later. Very well played. GGs. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, going to update the brackets. Let's see, your match is in, what, 45 minutes? Something like that, yeah. And it's going to be hello, hello against, I think, the nice guys. I can even pull that up. We delayed by 15 minutes. Okay, so yeah, it's Yeah, that's in correct, because we have one player coming a little bit later, so it's going to be about an hour. It's in about an hour. Okay, let's get a quick preview on this matchup scene. Obviously, ignore the... The map draft and the sieve draft, but we have hello, hello, and <laughs> oh, that's the wrong Posh spelled Nikas's name wrong, but no course it finishes like because Sleepy had something coming up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we got a. Kind of like a, since you're playing for Link, a CCB, put you guys at 10 points. You could argue Laposh is an A, which is 11 points. Um, I think you guys are close enough that the upset could happen. I would definitely favor the nice guys. But, yeah, you never know. Guys, All I can say is thanks for that, you know. You guys my won. hopes are 100% up for this game, and uh, get ready for an upset. And what did you guys beat last week? A 12-point team? 13-point team? I don't remember. I think it was... It was also I don't know. They points. were like 12 or 13. So you guys have been kind of the, the underground underdogs, you could say. Laposh is an S++++ in all our hearts, let's be honest. <laughs> By him time, he will... Bring it home for you. Oops, this is not the brackets. Wait, did I just see Fennet on the top? Whoa. Oh, it hasn't loaded. That's that's a bug. <laughs> okay. Brackets. Let's get these updated. I'm really interested to see Fennet's stats later on with the uh, KD ratios because now he put he racked up an 11, so should be quite nice. Yeah. I'll get those stats in, and we'll see the difference pretty soon. I'll probably do that after this game. Why not? I'll just get them in. Um, where the heck? There we go. Seal Clubbers. The quick 2-0. One of the quickest sets, I think, of the entire tournament. It was there, and then it wasn't. But... Other than that, I think 
that's about it for this match. You ready for yours, Ashberg? As ready as I'll ever be. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to co-cast. Hopefully I didn't do too shitty. And uh, yeah, see you in our next match. You did great. Everybody stay tuned. An hour from now, I'll ping the Discord. Another match happening. And we got five more today. Summer Slap Down 2, Round 3, Swiss Stage. All happening in the next, I think, eight hours. All the games will be played. It might be ten hours. Yeah. The next ten hours, all the games will be in. So stay tuned. More to come. GG's. Thank you for casting with me. And Cheers. Good luck on your match. Thank you. See ya. See ya.